Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlaub, the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we'll go across the sea to Hiroshima, Japan. Hiroshima and Honolulu are official sister cities. In fact, Hiroshima was Honolulu's first official sister city. Hiroshima and Honolulu have both suffered the destruction and agony of war. Both survived and have thrived, despite what happened. There's a photo of Honolulu, beautiful city, and now Hiroshima, another beautiful city. However, in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, both cities are suffering again. My guest today is Takafumi Sato. Mr. Sato is a good friend of mine and a brother attorney who lives in Hiroshima. In these difficult times, it is good to talk with a friend and brother attorney from a sister city. Aloha, Sato-san. Aloha, hi, Shikuro-san. Hi. Good to Aloha. see you. Aloha. Um, you know, tell me, you know, let, let, let's just talk. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your job. Okay. Uh, I was born in, in Hiroshima. Uh, since then, I've lived here in Hiroshima all my life. About my uh, personal resume, I got a Bachelor of Law in, at uh, Hiroshima University and got a Master of Law at Hiroshima uh, Graduate School of Hiroshima University. I majored in Japanese uh, Constitution. Then I passed the bar exam after completing a two-year apprenticeship at the Judicial Research Training Institute under the Supreme Court, I chose to become an attorney at law, what's called bengoshi in Japanese. Uh, bengo means uh, arguing for a client, and she means a warrior. So bengoshi. Uh, is a warrior arguing for a client. And uh, 14 years ago, I became a faculty member of Hiroshima University Law School and taught the students uh, uh, civil law, civil procedure law, and professional responsibility for 11 years. As a matter of fact, I'm a member of Hiroshima Bar Association, having practiced law over 37 years. Uh, talking about the cases I've handled so far, they are full of uh, varieties, such as uh, contracts, tort, bankruptcy, divorce, inheritance, personal injury, criminal case, and so on. Because uh, as you know, I'm a sole practitioner. Right, you're right. You you were a sole practitioner just like me, and uh, I, I learned something now from you about warriors arguing for their client. Very good. I like that. I like that description. That's what I'd like to be—a lawyer, Bengoshi. And but tell me, you know, I'm interested too. Why did you become an attorney at law, a Bengoshi? Oh, uh, because uh, I'm a well a man who is a uh, full of uh, curiosity. Uh, before leaving the uh, Judicial Research and uh, Training Institute, I thought uh, I could see many worlds uh, through the job of Bengoshi. For instance, uh, if I become a defense attorney, I can go to a jail and to interview my client. So I can observe inside of the jail. Huh? Oh, there are bars. I don't want to be behind the bars. <laughs> if I become a trustee of bankruptcy for a furniture company, then I can go to the company and watch how they make uh, wooden furniture, a desk, a chair, or a sideboard. Oh, their technique is marvelous. I wonder why this company went down. I'm very curious. The job of Bengoshi fulfills my curiosity and uh, your curiosity, I think so. I wanna tell young people, if you are full of curiosity, the Bengoshi's job is for you. 
I promise. That's, that is, I think that's pretty good advice, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, you, you, we, we, we've been friends for many years and Sato-san, uh, you were at my law firm for a few months in 1990. Uh, oh, wow, 30 years ago. Uh, what, what was that about? Why, and and you, you, by the way, you look the same today as you did then. Why did you oh. come to at, the, at that time? Oh, thank you for your compliment. Uh, <laughs> at that time, uh, I was a visiting scholar to the Howard University School of Law, uh, William Richardson School of Law. And one of my aims was to uh, research on jury trial because uh, we had no jury trial in Japan. So almost every day, I went to uh, observe jury trials at the first circuit court, downtown Honolulu. And I enjoyed watching uh, jury trials very much. You allowed me to use a room with a telephone at your law firm during my stay. I learned a lot from you and Ms. Heron. Uh, please give my best wishes to her. And furthermore, <laughs> I was also interested in the law school education. So I took uh, some classes uh, such as uh, taught, contract, wills and estates at the uh, Richardson School. Then uh, the professor, I found that the professor asked uh, the students many questions, many questions. And the students uh, answered uh, the questions uh, properly, I think. Mm. Such a Socratic method was uh, new and uh, very interesting to me. So the uh, experience at uh, Hawaii University School of Law and at your office uh, made a great contribution for me to teach at uh, Hiroshima University Law School later. A big mahalo to you. Well, well we, were, we were very happy to have you at our office and Fern was my secretary. Uh, she was my secretary for 30 years uh, plus. And, uh, uh, you know, she was happy and says aloha to you also. Uh, you know, that, you, you came to Hawaii from Hiroshima and uh, that's interesting. Hawaii and Hiroshima have a history. What, you know, I, I know you know what that is. Tell me about the history of Hiroshima in relation to Honolulu. What, what things do we have in common? What, what's our history? Okay, uh, though I'm not a historian, I'd like to uh, try. Uh, over 100 years ago, Hiroshima prefecture was not so rich, a rather uh, poor region. So the uh, many uh, people from Hiroshima uh, went to uh, Hawaii and many people uh, immigrated to Hawaii. Uh, for instance, uh, Hiro, Kona, Maui, uh, Kauai, etc. The name of Hiro originated uh, from Hiroshima, Hiro. <laughs> hmm. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I never knew that. Uh, yeah. Then uh, in the morning of Sunday, uh, December 7, in 1941, Japanese army carried a surprise attack uh, to the Pearl Harbor in Honolulu and sank the battleship Arizona, as you know. Four years later, in the morning of August 6, uh, in 1945, US army dropped off the atomic bomb at the height of 3,000 meters in the sky of Hiroshima. Mm. Both so events were the great tragedy during the Pacific War time. People in Honolulu experienced the tragedy of the Japanese army surprise sudden attack. And people in Hiroshima experienced the tragedy of the US Army's atomic dropping. But a few years had passed since the end of the World War II, then people in Honolulu began to raise money to help the reconstruction of Hiroshima. The amount of the raised money was rather huge. In 1959, Honolulu and Hiroshima became official sister cities. 
Then two years later, in 1961, the mayor of Honolulu, your mayor, visited Hiroshima and paid a tribute at the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park. Our young people continue to engage in the sister city programs until now. I think that's good. Yeah, you know, and and it made me think when you were talking about that, uh, you know, it's good that we can get through these things. It's good that we can be friends. It's good that we can help each other out uh, and get to know each other despite all that happened, despite the tragedy. And, you know, I'd like to throw up those pictures again, the picture of Pearl Harbor and Hiroshima. Uh, let's take a look at those photos one more time. There's Hiroshima after the atomic bomb. And then the next photo is Pearl Harbor. Mm. Now, you know, you think, you think about all of that, uh, that tragedy, the destruction of war, and we are, we're able to get through it. Mm. We were able to get through it and be friends. And each city was able to survive. And I'd like to throw up the pictures again of, of Honolulu today and Hiroshima mm. today. You know, uh, wow. You know, that talks there about the ability to survive and thrive. And we were able to do that. And, you know, I, 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 I want to... I, th I think we'll we'll take a break now, one minute break, and after the break, I'd like you to tell us why we were able to survive and thrive after these horrific attacks. Mm -hmm. So let's take a break, okay. and then when I come back, I'd like you to talk about what your thoughts are and how we were able to survive and thrive. Okay. Okay, okay we'll do that. Aloha, I'm Christine Linders, a physical therapy specialist and the host of Movement Matters. My show is designed to teach you the simplest and most effective treatment strategies to get you out of pain and back to doing what you love. If you or someone you know is having pain in a certain area of the body, and would like a free assessment in treatment over media or in person, and then come on the show to talk about it, email us at thinktechmovementmatters at gmail.com. Or if you have a topic you would like to know more about, please email us. My goal is to decrease pain all over the world, inspiring people to take better care of their bodies, to enjoy life to the fullest. I look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back. Uh, yes. I'm Mark Bob. Uh, I am here with my brother Ben Goshi from our sister city Hiroshima, Mr. Takafumi Sato. Sato-san, when we left, I wanted to ask you questions about after the war, you know, after all this destruction. And you know, we're you know, we're suffering now too from this COVID-19. But how were the citizens of Honolulu and Hiroshima able to survive and thrive? after suffering such attacks in World War II. What, what is your thoughts on that? 
Uh, I cannot uh, explain the reason on the Honolulu side, uh, but uh, I can give you uh, one of the reasons on the Hiroshima side. Uh, one of the employees uh, working for Hiroshima City Hall won the uh, popular election for the mayor of Hiroshima City shortly after the atomic bomb dropping. His name was Mr. Hamai. He himself experienced the strong blasts and damages at his home. His home was only three kilometers from the epicenter. So he knew very well what the catastrophic damages caused by the atomic bomb dropping. Mayor Hamai made every effort to rebuild with all his heart, mind, soul, and his strength, along with the people of Hiroshima. In particular, he urged the Japanese diet to enact a special law for the reconstruction of Hiroshima as a symbol of city of peace. Thanks to Mayor Hamai, the special law passed the diet four years after the Second World War. In 1949, the name of the special law is the Hiroshima Peace Memorial City Construction Law. Under the special law, Hiroshima City could get various financial help and budget from the government for the reconstruction. I think that's an important reason why Hiroshima was able to survive. You know, uh, Mr. Hamai, I mean, what you're saying is you had a good leader. You had a leader, somebody that mm -hmm. people trusted and, and was able to help everybody and, and lead the city and maybe lead the country to a better place. And that's something I think we all need during these times. Uh, you know, and I've been to Hiroshima several times. I really enjoy going to Hiroshima. Many good stories about it and looking forward to going there again when this COVID-19 is over. And, but, but tell me, you know, right now we're in another period of bad times. And how does the COVID-19 pandemic influence the life and people of Hiroshima and, and being a lawyer, your job in particular at this time? Okay, uh, first uh, let me uh, talk about the uh, overall uh, Japanese uh, situation. The first uh, wave uh, hit uh, Japan in February. Uh, then the, uh, the government uh, declared emergency uh, state conditions in early April. Since then, uh, we had refrained from going out for one and a half months. Most restaurants were closed. In relation to my job, the trials and hearings were also suspended. Then the number of the infected people drastically dropped down the government canceled the emergency declaration uh, <laughs> late May. So we felt uh, relieved and we felt uh, safe, all good. <laughs> but uh, that's one a totally an illusion. One week later, the number of the infected people began to rise gradually. And recently, as you know, maybe the number has been rapidly increased. Right. I believe we are in the midst of the second wave. Uh, speaking about Hiroshima, uh, there have not been so many infected people, very fortunately. The death toll has been only three in Hiroshima Prefecture, uh, with its population of about three million. The death toll all over Japan is about 1,000. This number is very small compared with the number of 150,000 in the US uh, because the population of Japan is about one third of the US. The death toll in the US is 150 times higher than the death toll in Japan. 
Uh, we do not know why the death toll is so small in Japan. According to the Nobel laureate uh, Professor Yamanaka, uh, he said uh, there may be a factor X among uh, East Asian people, including Japanese. Uh, first, uh, we bow, uh, not, uh, we do not hug. No, no. Mm. Uh, and uh, you often kiss, <laughs> but we don't. We seldom kiss. Second, we are accustomed to wearing masks. Mm. The third, we take off shoes entering our house. The fourth, this is my personal opinion, when we pronounce a word in Japanese, we open our mouth uh, only a little bit uh, like America, not America in English. So we do not make so many splashes when we are talking. Regarding myself, uh, during the stay home period, I spent uh, reading a journal of the plague year by Daniel Defoe. He is famous for his novel, Robinson Crusoe. Do you know that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I, that's a great book. It kind of reminds me of uh, if he landed on Hawaii. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. In a journal of the plague year, uh, Defoe uh, described the terrible conditions of London attacked by the pestis what uh, was called uh, Black Death in 1665. The population of London is said to have decreased to two thirds by the plague. Or oh, one third of the population of London was lost. Oh, that's a terrible condition. So the, uh, his book is very informative and interesting. It's one of the books you must read. Mm. And also, uh, may I talk about the uh, influence of the COVID-19 uh, to the job of Ben Goshi? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested to hear that because uh, a lot of what you've said so far reminds me of Hawaii, but we're suffering much more actually than Japan. And maybe, maybe we have to adopt some of your customs. Uh, but anyway, yeah, tell me how, how has the COVID-19 affected the activities of Bengoshi. Uh, yes, the warriors. Okay. Uh, the activities of Bengoshi have been uh, lessened as well as the uh, businesses uh, because we have to maintain uh, social distance. Mm. Uh, generally speaking, uh, Japanese Bengoshi have been very active because of of a self-governance and autonomy of our associations. Well, that self-governance is an outstanding characteristics of Japanese Bengoshi. <clears throat> uh, in Japan, the Supreme Court has no control over Bengoshi. Hmm. In the US, well, each uh, Supreme Court of each state has the uh, controlling power to supervise lawyers. However, in Japan, only a Japanese uh, Federation Bar Association or local bar associations has the power to supervise and disperse their members. <clears throat> However, due to the pandemic, we are not active in performing our job. Maybe uh, from now on, I suppose that the use of the information technology will be accelerated in the legal world. In the near future, we would uh, sit uh, at a law firm like this and send uh, all the pleading answers to the judges and the respondents' attorneys. And so and, uh, we conduct, uh, we would conduct a witness examination by TV conference and Zoom or Zoom the issue would be 
how the openness of the trials should be maintained, and at the same time, how the private information should be protected, not to uh, spread over. Right, so, you know, uh, it looks like your life as a lawyer is somewhat similar to our lives here too. I mean, we're, we're discovering these things. These are all new uh, for us. Uh, you, you know, how, how do you, uh, you know, what, what, what do you conclude? What are, what are your conclusions? Yeah, uh, this uh, new life, uh, well, uh, is a rather solitary uh, life in all aspects until an effective vaccine is developed. Maybe it will take one year or two years or more. Are we able to uh, endure such a solitary uh, life for a long time? I suppose that Japanese people can do because uh, we had shut our door towards the outside world over 200 years and had been accustomed to a solitary, peaceful, rather sleepy life until the Commander Perry arrived. The Commander Perry arrived at Tokyo Bay with his black four battleships in 1854. He and his crews surprised us by the four large black battleships with big cannons. They woke us from the long, peaceful, sleepy life. I imagine that the people in Tokyo at that time must have shouted at each other, watching the four black battleships, maybe as follows. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early way what so proudly the battleships are coming to us gallantly? Oh, we must wake up. <laughs> and we must wake up, we must run fast to catch up the foreign countries. The land of Japan and the home of the brave. Thank you, Commander Perry. We've called them up. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if, uh, if he deserves any thanks for that. It might have been better just to keep sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, sometimes, sometimes that's that's the best result. But yeah, we'll we'll we're, we will wait, and I'm I'm glad that I was able to talk to my Bengoshi brother in my sister city, in our in Honolulu's sister city. Uh, thank you for telling us what you're doing. It's good. I think it's good for everybody to talk with their brothers and sisters at this time, and just have this type of exchange. And it helps your mind and it helps you feel better. And, and maybe it'll help us survive and thrive. So Sato-san, nice to see you. This, will, this ends our program. Aloha. OK, uh, Shukro-san, thank you very much for inviting me to this program. OK, see you. See you again. Look to Aloha, bye-bye. Aloha, bye-bye. <laughs>